Hi, this is Patrick from STH. Today we're going to show you how to make the holy grail of development systems. We're going to have Proxmox VE, which has a web GUI for KVM and LXC containers, along with Docker. And to manage Docker, we're going to use a Portainer GUI. There are five steps that we're going to follow. The first one is we're going to install Proxmox. Second is we're going to update Proxmox. Third, we'll install Docker, then Portainer, and then we will have web GUIs to manage absolutely everything we could want. Getting to the first step, what we're going to do is on our test server, we're going to mount the Proxmox VE ISO. We're actually using the beta ISO for this one. Although you can set up installation on ZFS, we're just going to use a single disk. Select our time zone enter a password. Also make sure that you have your email address in there so that way when Proxmox sends you alerts you'll be able to see them. And then finally make sure you do set a host name and then give a static IP address to the machine. At this point you can just let the installer roll and after a few minutes it will install and then the system will reboot. We're going to fast forward just because nobody likes watching this. Once we get into the working system we SSH in and you're going to see that you get a lot of errors if you try to update it. So the first items of business are going to be that you have to add non-enterprise repositories and then disable the enterprise repository assuming that you don't have a license and you just want to make this a free development server. Since Proxmox VE is based on Debian Stretch, there are a few changes when you do this step compared to old versions based on Wheezy or Jesse. But the overall process is the same as we've been using for years. Once this is done, you can actually update the system and you can see that the repositories all work. And we do suggest if you're using the beta version, update as soon as possible because there were some bug fixes that were pretty substantial. We're speeding this section up because this is just a lot of scrolling text at this point. After the update's complete, we suggest rebooting the box, at which point you now have an updated, ready to go Proxmox VE system. You can log into the web GUI at this point using the password that you set it up with, and you can see that the node is now online. At this point, you could go and make KVM virtual machines, you can make LXC containers, you can use Ceph storage, um, you could add ZFS storage, although you still need to use the CLI for ZFS. But overall, you have a very useful system here and something that you could replace a basic ESXi installation with no problem. The key here is that Proxmox still supports LXC containers, and there's a good reason for this, which we won't go into, but a lot of folks want to use Docker because Docker is new hot and has a giant mindshare. So what we're going to do now is we're going to install Docker, but we're also going to install a Portainer GUI, so that way you can have a GUI management for everything. And so our first step is that we need to set up the Docker repositories and then add the signing keys One note here, we are doing this as root because that's the default Proxmox login. In a real system, you probably want to use a uh, different user for security reasons. At this point, we can now install the Docker repository and then install Docker. Since nobody wants to copy and paste stuff off of YouTube, we're actually going to have this all on the accompanying site posts. So that way you can do this yourself very easily. And within a matter of a few seconds, we now have Docker installed and you can see that it's running. The next thing that we'll want to do is install Portainer because right now you'd have to manage Docker using the CLI and part of the nice thing about Proxmox is that you do get a web GUI, so it's a little bit more accessible for a lot of users. We're going to make a persistent data directory. We're just doing this on the base drive, but you probably want to put this either on Ceph or ZFS storage. 
Making Portainer useful requires two things in our setup. First, we need to have a persistent data storage, so we're going to create a volume for that. And the second thing is we're going to want Portainer to manage a local system, so we have to make another volume for that. We also need to map a port that's different than the Proxmox GUI, which is not too hard, but once we're done, you can now log in, set your username and password, and then start adding, removing, and managing your Docker containers directly inside Portainer. In the background, we're setting up a Monero mining container just to make sure everything works. But the cool thing about this setup is that Portainer can not only manage the local system, but it can also manage a Docker swarm cluster. So if you were to create VMs with many Docker hosts in them, you can actually use this Portainer instance to manage a Docker Swarm that's created out of all that stuff. So if you see guides online and you want to try Docker Swarm, this is a really good way to get set up. The downside to this is that you do need to use two different GUIs, whether you're working in Docker or you're working in KVM and LXC. The plus side is that you do have GUIs for everything, which makes it a lot more user friendly than having to go to the CLI for Docker. We have all the commands that you need on an accompanying main site serve the home post, so go check that out if you want to try this project. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more cool videos.